All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Jesse here. And in this video, we're just going to continue working on the grabbing functionality from where we left off in the last episode. If you haven't seen the last episode, then there should be a card somewhere up above or maybe down in the description. Either way, follow along, and I hope you guys enjoy. Today's episode and others just like it are brought to you by the patrons listed on the screen. If you'd like to support the channel in future development, then consider visiting my Patreon or Buy Me a Coffee page, where you can receive various benefits such as early access to my videos, project downloads, as well as personalized support. You may also want to consider joining the community by joining my Discord server, where you can receive help from me as well as the community. So come on over and be a part of the conversation. So now I want to adjust the camera pitch when we're holding an object. I don't want to look straight down at my feet when I'm holding an object. I just think it looks kind of funny. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just more of a aesthetic thing for me, but I'm going to go ahead and open up my content drawer, head up here to my character blueprints, and I'm going to open up my player controller. And in my player controller, we already have this function to begin play that limits the camera pitches, both minimum and the maximum pitch. So I'm going to create a new new custom event and I'm going to call this custom event adjust camera min pitch and with this I need an input I'm going to name this input pitch I'm going to make it a float and then from this float I'm going to go is this greater than or excuse me is this less than zero because it's minimum and if we look here at the view pitch minimum it's negative 70 so we're going to be sending a negative number from the player back into the player controller. So is it less than zero? And instead of a branch, I'm gonna grab a select node and plug this into here. So if this is less than zero, then I'm gonna take this pitch and plug this into the true. But if it's not, then I'm gonna just take what I already have hard coded here and plug it into the pitch as the false. So then I'm gonna take the get camera and the set pitch min, and I'm gonna plug them in here. And I'm gonna take the return value of the select and plug it into the view pitch min right there. So this should set it all up for us nice and easy. So now we can go ahead and head back to the player character. All right, so back here in the grab item input action off of the started, I'm gonna come in here and we could do this one after the is grabbing. So I'm gonna grab the player controller that we saved a long time ago here in the variables, components, or excuse me, not components, player controller over here. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna call that adjust camera min pitch function that we created or event that we created. And since this is in the started, I found that for me, negative 45 was a good value. So I'm gonna leave that there just like so. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna come down and we're gonna drag it to the completed branch. And I'm gonna put this before grab actor like so. And now if we compile it and play, let's see how that looks. Come in here, we grab an item. Right now you can see, we can see our feet right now. If I grab an item, this is as far down as I can go. And then I let go of the item and nothing happened. The reason why nothing happened is because I didn't come here and set this to zero. Go ahead and play. And there we go. We can't look down, we let go, and now we can see down. So there we go. That's what I wanted. So it makes it a little bit better, I think, for me when I'm holding an object that I can't go down and see my feet. So now let's work on the fact that we can throw an object all the way across the world, especially now that that only weighs uh, one kilogram. You can see it, boy, it's taken off down there. So let's go ahead and fix that issue. What I wanna do is I actually want to grab an item and no matter where I'm at when I let go of it, that's where the item falls back to the earth. So again, this is probably just a little bit hacky, but it works and this is kind of what I want to do. So um, as long as it works, it shouldn't be too big of a deal, right? Just do what you need to do to get the results that you want in the end. As long as everything comes out good, then perfect. So we're at our input action, grab item. I'm gonna move this grab actor and component class backwards a little bit because I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna grab this component, which is a static mesh component. I'm gonna go set simulate physics. I'm gonna plug the execution straight into there and I'm gonna leave the simulate physics to false and I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna just put another one in here like so and then I'm gonna re-enable it. What this is gonna do is this is gonna stop us as soon as we let go of it, it's gonna come through here. It's gonna set all these variables for us. It's gonna release the component and then we're gonna disable the physics, which means it's not gonna go flying through the air, but then we re-enable it instantaneously within the same tick and then it's gonna fall. It's gonna allow the gravity to have it fall straight back to the earth. So if we come back here and plug this back in, 
compile it, we get the error because we didn't include which component. So I'm gonna just drag off of here, plug that in. And now if we compile again, no errors, let's go ahead and hit the play button and give this a shot. Come in here and grab a mesh. And if I try to fling this across the map, there we go, we don't get anything. Fling across the map, perfect. That's exactly what I want. I wanna be able to just drop it and where I drop it, that's where it ends up. So perfectly desired. Now you see there, see how it's bouncing in the world? We don't necessarily want that. I don't want that, right? So I'm gonna show you how we can go ahead and take care of all the bounciness and things like that. Friction, if we wanted some friction, right? So maybe we don't want it to slide across the ground so fast, things like that. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so back here, we're in the BP world item. And if we come over here into the have static mesh, the uh, display mesh highlighted, come over here into the details panel. And when you come down here to collisions, you're gonna see physical material override. So if we create a new physical material, select this and go create new asset, physical material, the locations I wanna store mine, I'm gonna come over here to inventory items and create a new folder. And I'm gonna call this one physical materials because maybe you want to have more physical materials depending on the object with this what you can do if you do want multiple physical materials then you can create a new variable inside bp base item physical material and each item can incorporate its own physical physical material uh, with the characteristics that you want but i'm going to use this folder right here and the name of my physical material, I'm gonna call PM underscore world item. And when I hit enter, it's gonna ask which class, and there's only a physical material that we can make it a child of, so select that. And there we go, we've got our physical material right there. Now this is gonna be no different than the default physical material, even though it didn't have one here, there was a default physical material for it in the world. But I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and I'm gonna come here, open this up and now we're in the physical material details section and in here you can set various things that you want here's your friction your static friction if you want something to be a little bit you know more sticky that doesn't move across the world too well then you can set those here but for us right now i just want to worry about the restitution or the bounciness if you hover over here restitution or bounciness of the surface between zero which is no bounce and one always bounces so what i did was i set mine to about 0.2 and then now this isn't going to really do much on its own so what we need to do is i need to come down here i want to come down here to override restitution combine mode i'm going to enable that that's going to affect this one right here so now i have access to this one drop down box and instead of average i want to go ahead and select multiply so there we go that's all i'm going to do for this physical material at this point you can play with this and check this all out as you want not a big deal you're not going to really hurt anything by just adjusting the values all the way around so now i'm just going to go ahead and save that and let's jump over to the map press play and check that out so now if i come over here and grab an item as you see i got it up here and i drop it and it kind of bounced a little bit it wobbled as it landed but there's really no bounce to it, which is perfect. That's about what I wanted. So now here we, should, we can see the bounce really well and it doesn't really bounce. Now I can come up here and we can set the value. See, I'm pushing into this. It's not rolling at all. You can set its static weight less than 10,000 if you want. Uh, so you can kind of push items around if that's what you want to do. But um, now let's go ahead and worry about how I showed you guys earlier when it gets behind you, uh, how it can make you zip across the screen. Let's go ahead and deal with that because that's definitely not something you're going to want in your game unless you're making something like a goat simulator or something of that effect and you just want to make a goofy, goofy functionality. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right. So again, this is going to be a pretty easy solution, maybe a little bit hacky. Um, but it works, you know, I, I don't want the item being snug, uh, coming in from behind us really. We're meant to be grabbing it out in front of us. And I was working on a way to try to check the angle if the angle of the item becomes different, but I was having issues with that. And it may be something I come back and revise down the road because I don't really like the way I solved this, but I solved it, it works. Like I said earlier, if it works, you get the result you want, then, you know, it doesn't matter how you get there, right? Um, but this, you know, could affect some functionality down the road the way we're going to do it here so essentially all i did was i'm going to pull off of this here and i'm going to go set collisions collision response to channel that's the one i want i'm going to drag it up here again we're back here in the grab item in the start branch and i'm just dragging off of the grab actor 
the component class static mesh component and uh, that's all I'm grabbing off of that. So this is the static mesh collisions. I'm just going to add a reroute node here. And what I'm going to do is in the channel, I'm going to select pawn and I'm going to choose to ignore the pawn collisions while we're grabbing the item and moving it around. So with that, I'm going to duplicate this and I want this before the grab actor, the nulling of the grab actor should be last for everything you do, because if we had nulled this before, we wouldn't be able to grab off of here and get the target because it would be a null actor. So make sure this is always your last one set. And instead here for the pawn, instead of ignore, I'm going to go back to block. We want to block the pawn as we go through. So go ahead and compile it and let's go ahead and head back out here into the map. And just to show that this is going to work, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to expand its scale again. I'm just going to go a scale of three in the Y. So go ahead and hit play and let's check this out. All right. So now we come out here, we got a little bit of a wide one here. So right now we can walk through this, but if we pick it up and move it in, it's going to come here but it's gonna come right through the player. So right now we're inside the mesh. And if I let go of it, the collision comes back and it just kind of pops out of us so we can move it that way. But there you go, you can see now it's not gonna zip us across the world like it did earlier. So now the other thing I wanna do is, let's go ahead and fix that error now. We don't wanna be able to really put this into our inventory when we're holding it. Um, otherwise, we're going to end up getting the errors. Plus, you can see here, we still have the trace channel around here. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right. So back here on the player character blueprint, I'm going to come over here to vision trace. And there's a couple ways we could really handle this. We can not interact with it. We can sit here and check, uh, are we grabbing? And if we are grabbing, don't execute interaction, but that's not gonna solve the trace issue. And we still may end up having to do this. This there still be, it still may be a better way to exit this because maybe we do want to interact with items when we're grabbing stuff. Like maybe, I don't know, interact with the vehicle. I don't know. There might be something that we want to interact with, but the way I handle this for right now, if we go into vision trace, function open this up and what i did is i'm just going to create a little bit of room take the front of this and from here i'm going to drop in a branch and don't forget to plug this in back into the true and with this i'm going to grab is grabbing but i'm going to grab the not operator not grabbing are we not grabbing this true we're not grabbing it then go ahead and just do like we normally do but if we are grabbing it then i'm going to come down here i'm going to take the vision actor is it valid plug that into the false and if it is is if we do have a vision actor then what we want to do is we want to set look at message so if it is valid we're going to set the is look at message and we want this to be false now remember if you come all the way over here the set look at this is what tells us to enable the line trace around it so we're going to call that we're going to disable it from the vision actor and then we're going to take the vision actor again and this time we're going to clear it so just pop it in there i'm going to grab a return node and duplicate it down here i'm going to duplicate it one more time down here because if it is not valid if we don't have a vision actor then we just simply don't want to do anything now honestly we could just fully you know shut down the vision trace when we are grabbing something which would be you know the vision trace but this is a timer so that makes it a little bit harder but we can pause the timer remember we created a handle for this vision timer right here you can always go like this and go pause timer by handle so we can even pause the entire vision trace we can clear this out and then pause the vision handle at the end and then when we're done grabbing re-enable it that's something we might look at down the future but for now this works just fine for me so if we run into issues down the road or we want to set up something a little bit different, then we will do it down then uh, when the time comes. So that is it. Go ahead and compile it. And now if we press play, come out here, pick it up. We lost the line around there. And if I press E, it's not going to put it in the inventory because I don't have a vision actor. Now that's what I'm talking about. We may still have an issue. You may actually be able to catch it in between tick where it's actually able to go into the inventory the chances of that are minute but it is possible so if that becomes an issue becomes a bug at some point down the line then you can always pause the timer like we discussed earlier all right well i think we're pretty close to wrapping it up here so um the only thing i think we have left to do is i want to incorporate the ability to rotate the item around while you're holding it you know that way like if you're trying to situate a desk or a workbench or something you know you can kind of rotate it around now i'm not going to get too 
crazy with the uh, uh, rotation here. You can do all kinds of things with the rotation if you so choose, but I'm just gonna stick with one axis as we do. Um, with that, I'm also going to create a rotation reset because sometimes things can get a, a little bit funky and especially only having one axis that I'm gonna rotate on. I want the ability to reset it back to its zero, zero, zero state, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and open up the content drawer. I'm gonna go back to where I have all my inputs and in the actions here, I'm gonna create two inputs action. I'm gonna create an input action here. I'm gonna call this one IA underscore player underscore grab rotate. And then I'm gonna actually duplicate that and I'm gonna call it grab rotate reset. There we go. So with the first one, with the grab rotate, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna change the variable type from digital to access 1D. Go ahead and save it. Now we don't need to do anything with the other one. Having it as a bool is just fine. So let's go into the input mapping context. And in here, I'm gonna close most of these up if I can. So now if I hit the plus button here, and of course it's gonna open them all up, come in here. And for the first one, let's do grab rotate. And for the grab rotate, the first one, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna enter an R, then I'm gonna add another one right here. And I'm gonna make this one Q. So R and Q are gonna be my rotation tools. Now remember, you can only do this, we're, we're only gonna be able to rotate while we're holding the item in our hand, which means you're gonna to have to hold your grab key, which in my case, I made it an F to be able to push R and Q. So if you wanna be able to do it with one hand easy, either figure out better buttons for you to use or just do what you need to do. So this is what I'm choosing. So for R, we don't need to add anything to that, but for Q, we need to add a modifier. So come over here to modifier, hit the plus, and I want to negate this. So that way, when we press Q, it sends across a negative one, whereas an R will send a one, All right? So let's go ahead and create a second one now. Hit the plus up here on the mapping, come down here, and this one will be the reset. For this, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna push the right mouse button. We're gonna get a little context up here. That's not a big deal. But I want the right mouse button for this. And one thing I do actually want, and we could set this here or in the input action itself. I'm gonna go back to the input action real quick and I'm gonna to go to grab rotate reset again I said digital was good but what we actually want here for the trigger I want to do down we only want to do this while it is held down the mount right mouse button so go ahead and save that I'm gonna go back into the IMC the input input mapping context I'm gonna come down here now and so now we have the right mouse button with down on here so go ahead and head back to the player character and the reason why we're doing both these at the same time because they're essentially going to be the same function with just a little bit of difference in here so I'm going to go select IA player grab rotate and then I'm going to get the grab rotate reset get them both down here so let's go ahead and set up the grab rotate first. So we're gonna go in the trigger. I'm gonna drop a branch. First, we need to make sure, are we grabbing anything? So grab the B is grabbing. And then I'm gonna type and grab actor is valid. Make sure it's the function call. We'll plug that one into the other half of the and. So both these conditions have to be true in order to rotate. And if it is true, well, then we need to get the grab handle and let's go set target rotation right here set target rotation plug it into the true so now the rotator we need the grab handle pull it down here and get target now we can't just get the target rotation but we can get target location and rotation which isn't a big deal so we got the rotator here so from the rotator the way we add rotators if you don't know it's actually not add it's called combine rotators so i'm going to split this out because i'm only doing one axis and you can do this like i said however you want you can add extra keys um, not just uh r and q you can add something else in there maybe hold shift and r if you want to rotate it along a different axis whatever you want to do but i'm not going to do that as of right now, maybe down the road. But I'm gonna take the action value, I'm gonna plug it into the yaw. And that should do it for that one. Now the next function is actually gonna be virtually identical. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna grab the whole thing and duplicate it, plug that into the trigger of the reset. And with that, the only difference is gonna be, oh, let me go back up here. I just realized I did not plug in that rotator. You're probably yelling at me. Now, instead of combining the rotators, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to R interp 
two constant. So we're going to interpolate between its current value, this is the rotation it currently is, and zero, 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 right? So we just want to reset it back to nothing. Now we need a delta time in here. So I'm going to right click and go get world delta seconds, plug that float value into delta time, and then the interp speed, do this what you want. The fat, the higher this number, the faster it's going to interpolate. Um, you may want it to go slow so it doesn't, you know, quite reset too fast. So, but I'm going to do 100 for now, and then I'm going to take this rotator and plug that into the set target rotation. So by having this as a down, the triggered while we're the whole time we're holding it, this is acting like a tick. Same thing with up here; it's just acting like a tick. So it's going to come in here and slowly interpolate and reset the target rotation. So go ahead and make sure you compile it and save it. And let's jump out into the graph and see how this works. All right, so let's jump on over here now. So if we grab something, it's kind of hard to tell if we're rotating something right now, holding these because, uh, you know, it's circular. So we can't really see, you can kind of see the shadows of it rotating there. So we still got this here. So if we grab this, we'll push this out and rotate it around. So there we go. Now, if I push right mouse button, it's going to reset it. It doesn't seem too spectacular right there because honestly, I can rotate it one way or the other while holding it. Okay. But if we come over here and let's say get this on its side or even almost upside down. So again, I can rotate it along the yaw axis. But if I hold right mouse button, it's going to reset the entire thing back to normal. Same thing with this one. Let's go over here and maybe get this to turn somewhere funny and then hold right mouse button. And there we go. It resets it back to the way it should be. All right. So there we go. I think we've pretty much accomplished everything that I want to accomplish in this one. I hope you guys found this tutorial super useful. If you did, please do me a favor. Go down and hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe while you're down there liking it. Uh, hit that notification bell to be updated whenever we drop a new video or do anything special on the channel. If you've got any comments, questions, leave them down below. Come on over, join the Discord, be part of the community, be part of the conversation. And until the next one, peace.